Karen Dean, and this is Advocate Today. For over 14 years, the New York City-based organization Queer Art has been creating more diversity and inclusion for LGBTQ plus people across multiple disciplines. And in times like this, these safe spaces are vital for queer artists and creatives to thrive. Now, Queer Art is trans-led for the first time, and the leadership tells me that they are ready and excited to get to work. Rio, L, thank you so much for joining us. How are you all today? Doing good. Thank Doing you for right. having us. Yes, this is so exciting. And I, you know, I'm going to start off with you, L. Can you give me a little bit of background? What is queer art? Well, I would be honored to do so. Queer art is an artist-led and artist-driven community art space. We were originally based in New York and providing service solely in New York. We have now expanded to a national service organization. Um, we're working across the fields of film, visual art, literature, and performing art. This kind of intergenerational, multidisciplinary exchange came out of the loss of a generation plus to AIDS and this desire to create mentorship in a space that was lacking. Um, it's been an honor to get to see where things are going as part of the team and look at what might be ahead for us. You know, and recently you both were named, you know, into leadership roles for queer art. Rio, kind of explain a little bit, how does it feel to, you know, be a part of the leadership team of this organization? Yeah, it's it's really amazing. Elle and I have both been at Queer Art for several years. I started in 2018. Elle, I believe you started in 2021. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, we've been in the mix for a while now and have been working closely with the board and with our outgoing executive director, Travis Chamberlain, on really thinking about how we as a queer organization can really think about leadership in a way that is responsive and very forward thinking. And so models of shared leadership, um, you know, informed consent, uh, thinking about the ways that as an organization, we are doing all of the different kinds of decision making processes um, in a way that is really keeping the point and the heart of our organization in mind, making sure that the work that we do is always serving our artists first and foremost. And so shared leadership, I think, is a way for us to be more collaborative, more community minded in our work. And, you know, Elle, as we all know, you know, art is such an inclusive thing. You know, like you said, it's visual, you know, audio, all of the stuff that you mentioned earlier, you know, what are some of the initiatives or projects that you all have, you know, that you have planned to help continue to push the mission of queer art? Sure. I think a space that we're in right now is really focusing on our artists and their totality. You don't have to be producing your art to be an artist. We want to make sure that folks are feeling secure in getting their basic needs met first and foremost before they're feeling like they need to push themselves to create in a generative way. So a lot of our work right now is around that community building, especially in this new kind of national space that we're navigating. How are we creating intimate spaces, be they in person or online, that are encouraging conversation and helping folks think about the creative development of their work, but also that professional development. We get requests all the time around support with financial literacy. How am I building out my career portion that I could get from a mentor, but maybe not from anywhere else? And, you know, this is the first time the organization will be trans led. What does this mean for the both of you? And Rio, we'll start with you. I think it's a really important time to see trans leadership uh, within all different sectors of, of, you know, nonprofit work, creative work in all spaces. I mean, um, trans people have always been such thought leaders and movement leaders within um, queer movement history. And it's really important, I think, especially now as we are navigating s such increased anti-trans legislation, so much backlash that we really have folks at the forefront who understand what are the needs of um, trans artists, what are the needs of, um, you know, making sure that um, in our case, as an arts organization, making sure that we are affirming um, queer and trans artists and making sure that they are not censored in any way, shape or form. And L? 
similar sentiment, just the joy of being in this space and thinking about, I don't know, the fact right now, especially as someone coming from that fundraising mindset, we're noticing how much this, you know, the political tax that are happening on our community are translating into corporate support um, and the ways that Pride Month is being in some ways weaponized or drawn away. There's this decrease in financial opportunities for our community at the organizational level and individually. So figuring out, you know, knowing our ties as individuals and as a community, seeing how much uh, like gender diversity we're growing within, within our applicant pool. It's a thrilling time. It feels, it feels like an honor to get to recognize that this is a new moment. You know, in life, you know, we all need a good mentor or a big brother, big sister, you know, to, you know, by our side to help us, you know, guide through life. You know, tell us a little bit about the Queer Arts Mentor Program and how does it all work? For sure. So the mentorship program, uh, it started in 2011. There are now over 200 artists that have come through the mentorship program. And it's national in scope and intergenerational and interdisciplinary. So we are serving artists that are in visual art, in literature, in film, and in performance. And basically, folks apply for a mentor that we have. You know, we we have about eight to 10 mentors every year that we work with. Folks apply to work with them and then they, um, you know, once the mentor has picked someone, they get together and work on a project that the fellow is developing over the course of the year. So they're doing that relationship building. And then we are also working with the fellows and the mentors sort of like as a cohort to do all other kinds of like relationship building and professional development throughout the year as well. You know, here we are, like we mentioned earlier, you know, Elle said, you know, they're trying to weaponize Pride Month and, you know, all this, you know, legislation that's trying to push forth. You know, we're in a time where queer culture is under attack. You know, let's just be for real. You know, how important are safe spaces like queer art for the community? Deeply so. <laughs> it's, it's, we're, I think as an organization, we've known for a while that the need exceeds our means. We're getting 300 applications for eight spots. We have these awards that are specifically serving, you know, a particular community and something about the funding model within nonprofits is very focused on this kind of exceptionalism of like, you have to be at the height of your career to get these resources and how we can focus on being a community space, a space of feedback and exchange. We recently had a series of mock panels where applicants Hence, we're able to come in and get feedback on their applications. I think programs like that that offer a wider level of access. We have such a great alumni community and there's so much, you know, tight bonding there. But when continuing to open the doors and really reach a wider group is, is something we need in this moment where we're lacking those safe spaces. Yeah. And, and you think of the sort of role in art as a way of naming all of these kinds of different injustices and like how important it is for us as an organization to be supporting artists to be able to express themselves in their ferocity, right? I just found you guys on Instagram and I'm gonna hit that follow yeah. button and anyone who's watching needs to do the same because I am very, I'm so, so interested in learning so much more about what you all do. And I'm, I'm so grateful that you all took the time to just come here and talk to talk with me and share this with our viewers. It's, we greatly appreciate it. I know I do. And thank you so much for all of the work that y'all do at, at The Advocate. The Advocate is such an institution, you know? So it's, it's, it's really an honor. Oh, thank you, thank you. And thank you again, you all. Thanks for watching Advocate today. Download the app in the Apple or Google Play Store, and you can even stream us live there. And also, be sure to find us on YouTube, okay? For the Advocate channel, I'm Aaron Dean, and this was Advocate Today.